I've been looking at the night sky and thinking I would love to do an art journal spread all about the moon. The full moon was so beautiful. So I googled a few quotes about the moon. And if you want to art journal with me, I've done this as a free download. I'll put a link in the description. I've got this tile. I had no idea where it came from. Isn't that awful? Someone brought it back from I think from Greece for us. It's got a lovely man in the moon, so I might use that as some of my inspiration as well. And I'm working, whoops, there's a, this is where I break the tile. I'm working in my homemade journal and I am, I'm making progress here. I'm getting towards the end and the journal hasn't fallen to pieces yet, which is quite a surprise. If I need to focus, so if my mind is really distracted and I need to focus, I often start by writing in my journal about the subject or about what's on my mind or, or things like that. If you're frightened of the blank page and find it intimidating, writing across it can be a really useful thing to do. You can use a pencil, you can use a pen, that's up to you. Don't worry about how awful your handwriting is or punctuation or spelling or anything like that. It's just to focus your mind. So I simply picked two quotes from that sheet I just showed you. Three things cannot be hidden, the sun, the moon and the truth. And then I saw this, stay wild moon child. Step two is to collect some possible collage pieces. So what have I got here? I have got some packing paper. I have got paper from a previous project. I have got some Italian arias that I bought from local charity shop. Not that, not that. Tissue paper um, and a few bits of black and white printed paper. So I'm thinking this is at night. So I'd quite like to do a sort of almost landscapey type, maybe in a valley with a big moon here. So I'm going to use all greys and blacks and I'm going to start by making some shapes. Usually I much prefer a torn edge, but I'm thinking if that's going to be the edge of a hill, maybe it needs to be less bumpy. So I might cut this to shape. I've been ripping up bits of paper and trying to create the feel of hills and mountains round a valley. That's what I was thinking of. So the next step is to stick this all down. But before I do that, I am going to use some black gesso over what is going to be my night sky. You could use black acrylic, black gouache. You could stick black paper down there. Entirely up to you. But I'm going to make some lovely night sky. Gesso is a primer. It's not a paint. It is designed for making your surface ready to paint on. Oh, what I will say is if you're worried about painting on the next pages or getting paint further down your journal, just pop an old piece of paper under that page and it will protect it. And I thought if I use this rather than black paint, it'll just be ready. It'll be ready to paint on or stick on or do whatever I fancy. If you are concerned you're going to forget which papers go where, just take a quick photo. The glue I like to use when I'm collaging is matte gel medium. You could use Mod Podge, PVA, anything like that. You could just use a glue stick, but Matte gel medium is archival, it's pretty reasonable in price and it's and good at sealing your papers as well as sticking them so it's a very versatile medium. I'm just sort of got lots and lots of layers here so to take the weight off the page anything that's going to be covered up I, I will try and rip off a bit.
it's worth taking your time over the collage because this is now the foundation of our next layer and we want to make sure everything is stuck down and secure and as we want it. If it falls to pieces at the end, you're going to be upset. So do make sure it's stuck down. When you watch YouTube videos, you think, oh, they do it so quickly and I'm taking ages. But remember that possibly the people you're watching have been doing it for ages. All that they're just editing their videos and you won't see everything they've done. And, you know, just you do you and you will be fine. What I would say is don't take forever about it either. Try and work pretty intuitively and just feel your way through. And if it, you'll find your, your picture often has a mind of its own, which is rather lovely. These overhangs I'm going to rip off when it's all dry. So you're happy with your collage. Doesn't have to have dried, but if you've got some clear gesso, you could apply that over your collage just to seal it and get ready for anything you want to put on top. If you haven't got clear gesso, don't worry, and just put some more of your matte gel. Some of these papers are quite absorbent. And you might find that if you put watercolour or inks on top, that they will, it'll feather in the paper and make really quite ugly marks. If you've used quite shiny papers, say out of magazines, you will find that that will resist water based media. So, gesso just helps prepare the page for anything you throw at it next. Don't forget to wash your brush because the matte gel and the gesso will be waterproof once dry and then we can come back and do the next stage. What's a good thing to do now is to rip off any excess that you don't want. If you prefer to cut it off, that's fine. Say, and if you like the look of having overhanging bits, you leave it, but that looks better to me so i want my moon in the sky this is just an ordinary white pencil that i'm going to put an outline i'm going to use white gouache to paint my man in the moon because it needs to be pretty opaque to cover over that black you could use acrylic of course I may need to do multiple layers of the gouache to really cover seems to have covered pretty well and then we can just put the features on with a steady hand and a nice thin brush makes them look a bit cheerier if your hand isn't terribly steady to do a little bit of painting like this. Don't worry, you could print it out and collage it on. Maybe you could find a stencil, a sticker or something that you could apply. So don't worry about that. And if doing that little bit of detail at the end with the thin black brush, again, is, you know, it's quite steady enough for it. Try using a black pen over the top. I would like some little stars and I haven't got a star stencil or anything like that. So I'm just going to freehand them. And then if I mask off here, we could do some little splatters as well for the distant stars. I would like to write a phrase over here. What has been going through my mind is not any of the phrases that I put on that prompt sheet. I was wondering why I was sort of humming it. Let's face the music and dance 
And then I realised, if you know the song, there may be trouble ahead, but while there's moonlight, love and romance, let's face the music and dance. So that's what I want to write here. And I am going to use my white gouache and a brush and then smarten it all up. So I've used my white pencil just to make sure I get the spacing right. You could again print this off and apply it. You could use a brush pen, depending what your background is. Well, given how bad my handwriting is, I'm quite pleased with how that's turned out. So we're start starting to get all the main elements here. We've got our background, we've got our focal point, we've got a sentiment. And now we need to bring it all together. I mean, we could leave it like this, but the fun of doing this sort of mixed media is that you can add more and more and more. I fancy doing some trees along here. You know how you see sort of in winter ghostly trees sort of outlined? I So I have ripped up some tissue paper that I think I will stick here and then I'm going to go on and do sort of skeleton outlines. I've never done this before. And then I've got a black Posca pen, so one of those acrylic markers. Basically, you pump it up and down until the colour comes through. And then I am going to do quite sort of stylized tree trunks. And then they can come up to the edge. wonder if I should have done them a bit finer so I might just put a slightly finer line in a few places and I quite fancy some strange growths that aren't anything out of this world so the idea of some strange flowers growing in moonlight if you do something in one place, it is always sensible to do it in several for balance. If I only did them over here, they would look really, really weird. So we're on the finishing touches. Really, these are sort of doodles. They're just little embellishments, little flights of fancy. I would like something in this bottom corner. And I think I will tear off a little bit of this lacy paper and just stick it on there. I don't particularly like this area over here. It's just sort of a bit empty. Just wonder, just as that little bit saved that corner, wonder if I could sort of, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. It's just... a little wedge just break that up I'm inordinately fond of dots so I am just gonna put some dots on my letters so these are little embellishments they have no other meaning than to make you happy. So if there's a mark or a line that you particularly like, me and my dots, you and whatever, then put them in and it becomes like a signature on your 
spread. I'm going to listen to my own advice and say that I think we've done enough. If in future days I look at it and think, oh, I need more branches, I need something else. Well, of course I can do that. But the danger is that I will just fiddle and not enhance it. So here's my finished art journal inspired by the moon and indeed that tile that I had. We started with some writing and thinking and getting focused. Then we did lots of collage and applied black gesso to make the night sky. From there we painted the moon and added in our, our words and then from there it was all about embellishment. These ghostly trees and a few moon flowers, a little bit of splatter and then some dots because they, they make me happy. Hope you've really enjoyed that.